Another newly noted podcast comes to you from the Coach's Podcast Room at Spurrier's Gridiron Grill in Celebration Point. Okay, and welcome into another duly noted podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Meldon Law Gator Studios right here at Steve Spurrier's Gridiron Grill. We are back here. We've been, uh, been away for a while, Zach and I. We've been doing the shows from my house for a lot because of the holidays and everything, but we're back here. And we're going to get back on schedule. Monday, Coach Spurrier will be with us. He's with us today, too, and that's always good. Any, any day you have Steve Spurrier and Robbie Andrew, it's a good day. It's a good show. So we're looking forward to that. Um, on next Thursday, I think Chris Lowe is going to join us from ESPN. The following Thursday, it'll be Andrea Adelson, also from ESPN, who has written some really good stuff this week and uh, really enjoy her. To kind of wrap, both of them will kind of wrap up the football season. And then we'll move a lot of the focus into basketball. Um, and but football will stay prominent. Don't think it, it ever will go away. It's not. You know better than that. And we'll talk a lot about uh, NFL playoffs as well. Um, all right. So that is our schedule going forward. We're, we're kind of back to normal, I, I guess is the best way to put it. We weren't very normal during the holidays, but we produced great shows. And Zach did a great job getting them up, so we appreciate them. Let us get to. The process service of Gainesville, starting five, and the great Scott Hart, who is our sponsor there. We appreciate him so much. Uh, let's get to it right away. Number one, what a uh, weekend. Uh, do you call it a weekend when you go Thursday, Saturday? I think you do. Um, Thursday night, tonight, um, I mean, if, if you're listening to this on Friday, you already know what happened. I, I kind of already know what's going to happen, to be honest with you. Florida, South Carolina at the O-Dome. Uh, South Carolina is great. They, they're too big, I think, for Florida. But, hey, who knows what will happen? It's, it's just it's sports. It's not scripted. So we'll watch that. And then uh, Florida, Kentucky basketball on Saturday at 1230. Um, I'm going to be at that game. Kentucky, here's my take on Kentucky. I've watched a lot of their games, as you know, mostly rooting against them. Well, all, all rooting against them. I can't think of any time I've rooted for them. Uh, but they're really good. I think Florida's got an advantage underneath, down low, in the paint. Uh, and maybe they can, you know, like their offensive rebound totals have been crazy all year. They've fallen off a little bit. Maybe that's where they can beat the, beat them and win the game. Um, I think Kentucky's better than Florida. They've got they finally brought in a freshman class that is not just NBA centric. They're trying to win college basketball games. If you know what I mean, that and that uh, that I think is uh, dangerous. And I think they're a really good team. However, they have lost games, and it's a way to beat them. And uh, we'll see what happens. I'm looking forward to it though. Uh, looking forward. I'm going to watch the game tonight because we have a late um, radio show. Uh, so I'm going to watch the uh, a women's game tonight on TV. But I'll, I'll be at the Florida-Kentucky basketball game. So come up and say hello. And I listen to the, another duly noted podcast. And I get free fries all the time at Big Mills Cheesesteak. Yeah, those, those, those things would make me happy. Um, that's number one. Number two is we'll move to football. Uh, the news that Jason Mar Jason Marshall is coming back. Jason Marshall, I can't say Jason Marshall. I go Jason Marshall, but Jason Jason Marshall Jr. is coming back uh, for a fourth year. And the first reaction you have for some people would would have is, I don't like him. All right, he's the way he, he missed a lot of tackles, and he's the guy that. His helmet got turned sideways and he quit running. And yeah, all those things are true. But would you rather have a fourth year experienced senior playing cornerback for you or a freshman? I, I'm good with that. I, I, I'm glad he's coming back. Now, he's coming back, and I, I would hope it's NIL, but I think it's more didn't get the great grade because uh, didn't have a great junior year. I think he's a good player. I think he'll be fine. And I think maybe. It's almost like you got a uh, – like Billy Donovan used to start get, – he started getting all these transfers in. Uh, Dodo was one, Dorian Finney-Smith. Um, 
the other guy that Ronaldo. No, God, I can never think of his name. Anyway, they started getting transfers in, and I asked Billy Wine. He goes, "Look, if you get this is again before the portal. This was back when you had to sit out." And But you got guys in like that, and they knew it was their last chance. Now, nobody feels that way anymore. Nobody feels like, eh, you know, I got to do it this year. It's my last chance. Or I could just transfer again. Uh, I'm a big believer that they need to cut the second part of that out. But anyway, I like having them back. It's, a good, it's finally a good news thing for Florida. A lot of the guys who are in the portal are just still – I mean, it's un- unbelievable some of the people that are in the portal. A lot of them were right upstairs advisors um, the other day. Um, so we'll see what Florida gets out of it. Everybody who's panicking about, we're not doing, we're not getting guys out of the portal. Well, teams that had needs and maybe have a little more NIL money were able to go, kind of go and grab them right away. And a lot of it is quarterbacks. Florida didn't need a quarterback, um, but they need – they need interior alignment on offense and defense. We all know that. We'll see what they come up with. Wait until it's over before you start judging it. I mean, gosh, people just want to overreact to things. So, look, I'm, I'm, I have said this on this show. I've said it on the radio. I'm lukewarm on on uh, Billy Napier right now. I, to be honest with you, I, I, in the end, you're you are what your record is. They're eleven to fourteen under him. That's what they are. They're against power five teams. It's even worse. I think it's seven and 14, something like that. Anyway, um, so he needs to win and he needs to get better players in here. And the, all this talent acquisition thing needs to happen. They need to have a better team. That's the bottom line. They need to have a better team and they need to play better and they need to coach better. It's pretty simple. And the bottom line is they better do it this year. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying you got to win. I'm not even saying you got to get in the playoffs. I'm just saying you got to be have a chance to get in the playoffs in November. November's schedule's brutal. You may not get in, but at least have a chance. Go seven and five, eight and four. Go to a nice bowl, better bowl than what they've done the last two years. That's that's my what I think they've got to do. But what do I know? I'm just Pat Dooley. On another duly noted podcast. Number three on the process service of Gainesville starting five. LSU fires four guys on defense. I I agree. Uh, their defense was pathetic. It was even pathetic against, and, and well, in the bowl game, I'm trying to think of who they played. Who did LSU play? Uh, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Yeah. And Wisconsin's nothing special on offense, but they're better than they've been in, in the past. Um, but LSU, now I'm starting to wonder if Jaden Daniels was the right choice for the Heisman because Nussmeyer goes in there, they go right up and down the field. Maybe it's just, they've got good, really good players around him, but Jane Daniels was special. I, I still think that. Um, but the bottom line is this is what you do in college sports. Now coaches aren't doing good. You're not getting good results. Fire them. Oh, the, what's the buyout? Well, for these four coaches, $9 million is a buyout. Eh. They're lighting cigars with $1,000 bills. They don't care. Um, they're about, look, Fox, the word is Fox is about to come in and make an NFL-type offer for the college football playoffs. Now, all that money will leak down to everybody, okay? So there is so much money in the sport right now, and, of course, this is why the players want some of it. They want more of it. We're going to eventually probably get to revenue sharing but firing coaches at most places is not a big deal because you can afford it because everybody can afford it. Everybody can afford it. There's no doubt about it. Um, it's a money train, and that's the way it is. All right, number four on the process service of Gainesville starting five. I wanted to talk about this a little bit because Peter Burns said this on Twitter, and Peter's a good friend of mine and been on the show many times. We'll get him on again soon. Uh, college football isn't dying. It's just changing. 94 of 133 Power 5 teams had an increase in attendance this year. Now, I, I that that's not a surprising stat at all. I knew that attendance was up in a lot of places. 90, 90, what do you say? 94 of 133. 
I still think there's a little bit of a COVID bump that may fall off, and I'm not sure if it will. I'm, I'm curious to watch, see if it does, um, where people, when they were deprived of going to games, realize how much they missed it. I, that's my theory, and I'm sticking to it. Um, but he's right when he says it's not dying, it's just changing. But it's, it's not changing to make anybody happy. It's changing because it's got to change because of what's going on with the players. You know, ju- I just saw today, as before I came in, uh, the guy, f- the running back, Judkins from uh, Ole Miss is in the portal. He, he, like, was the most popular player out there. He was one of the best players they had, portal, in the portal. Of course, Florida is not looking for running backs, but happy to have him um, if you want to come here. We'll see what happens with the portal. I, we'll, we'll get into that going forward because I think Florida, if, if Florida is going to make a big splash, it's going to be in the portal with the late signing, the late guys that commit and sign, whatever. And I think they might. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, and finally, um, number five on our process service of Gainesville, starting five, Scott Hart. Appreciate him. So I, there's a chance. Now, as you listen to this, it may have changed, but that Kyle Trask is going to start this game Sunday for the uh, Bucks, um, And that would be exciting. I will say that. That would be exciting because they got a playoff game birth on the line. I I will be deeply into that. Driscoll is starting. Jeff Driscoll is starting this game for um, whoever he's playing for. I don't even know. Um, And Brissett was supposed to start, but he got hurt. So they would have had three Gators starting. And and in theory, Anthony Richardson could have been starting if he hadn't gotten hurt. So you would have had one, what, one eighth of the quarterbacks in the NFL would have been Gator quarterbacks? Who says the Gators don't have good quarterbacks? Well, they have. They had some. There's no doubt about it. Did you look it up? See their yeah, point? Yeah, going to be the Browns Week 18 starter. Browns? Yeah. I didn't even know he was with the Browns. I, they just signed. He was with the Texans. Okay. He was yeah. with the Texans. Yeah. Zach's got a straight. I, I thought he was with the Texans. I know he was, at one point he was at Arizona. and I don't know. Anyway. I'm happy for Jeff Driscoll. I liked him when he was here. He didn't like Gator fans, and I don't blame him because they were very, very critical of him. But anyway, so it's weird in the NFL. That's all I can say. Quarterback situations. There are some other quarterback situations where you read about it and you go, oh, this guy's going to start or this guy's going to start. And I go, who is that guy? Um, Guys get hurt a lot more in the NFL than they do in college. That's all I'll say. They got 32 teams, and there may be – a lot of guys are sitting out. I think Mahomes and uh, Lamar are sitting out. And there's some other guys that are going to sit out. And other guys are hurt. So, it is what it is. But I'll watch the games. Because that's why I'm. I'm a nut. All right. That's going to do it for our process service of Gainesville starting five. We'll take a break. We'll come back with Coach Spurrier. Look forward to that. Uh, as always, we'll talk to him about the new strength coach who worked with him at South Carolina. I'll also talk to him about the other games that are being played, and I'm sure he's going to the Florida-South Carolina women's basketball game tonight because uh, he knows the coaches on both teams. So he'll probably he'll probably be going to that. We'll see if he's going to Florida-Kentucky as well. So Coach Spur will join us, and then after that, we'll come back, take a break and come back, and Robbie Andrew will join us for Yes, No, Where, Maybe, and we'll get to all of our great stuff that our sponsors bring us, Adam's Rib Code to Go, Gator of the Week, stuff like that. So we'll take a break, and we'll come back here on another Duly Noted Podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Melvin Law Gator Studio. Process Service of Gainesville offers a rapid turnaround on affidavits of service for Gator lawyers locally and nationwide. Our friend Scott Hart offers immediate responses on status requests and is a member of NAPS and FAPS, and he has been a part of the community for almost two decades. Need service? Call Process Service of Gainesville at 407-697-9592 or email shartgators, that's G-H-T-R, at yahoo.com. And make sure you ask about the paralegal legal secretary bonus program. 
Things have certainly got a little out of hand lately when it comes to just buying our everyday necessities. Just look at gas, streaming services, and heck, even chicken wings. Well, there is one necessity that shouldn't cost a ton, taking care of yourself and helping fix all the aches and pains in life, and the fine folks at Titan MRI agree. With costs a fraction of what you'd pay at a hospital, you'll not only save money, you'll be taken care of by staff with over 20 years experience. So when you need an MRI, call Titan first, and you can go where your doctors send their families. Now offering CAT scans. Great food, great atmosphere, a diverse menu, everything made from scratch, plenty of space, and locally owned. These are all the characteristics of a great restaurant. And you can find each and every one of them right here in Gainesville at Ballyhoo Grill. Ballyhoo Grill prepares all of their food fresh every day from their salad dressing to their award-winning soups. Bring your family and enjoy dinner under the Tim Trebo Tiki Hut while listening to live music. Or if you're running low on time to eat out, they also deliver through Uber Eats, Fight Squad, and Postmates, a Gainesville staple that's been open for over 30 years check out ballyhoo grill on facebook or at ballyhoogrill.com okay and welcome back to another duly noted podcast presented by titan mri from the melden law gator studios right here at steve spurrier's gridiron grill mm-hmm. and melden law also sponsors appearances mm-hmm. by steve spurrier we haven't seen him in a couple of weeks because we he's been busy and we mm-hmm. were taking time off for for yep. uh, the holidays did you have a good christmas yeah everything went pretty much according to plan uh a little travel here there and the other but uh sort of been interesting watching the ball games uh, yep. gosh I, I heard that the alabama michigan game was the most watched college game ever only the nfl super bowl was i think hot. it was uh, I think it was third. Was it third? You know, there were. It's weird because in 2014, both the playoff games got ratings that are, they can't. Nobody seems to get right? by. Okay. So that was the first one, and mm-hmm. that was uh, FSU, Oregon, and uh, Alabama, Ohio okay. State. So I think it finished third, and then the I other guess game. That's one of those things. It depends on who you listen it to. Does. It does. It <laughs> yeah. does. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and who knows how mm-hmm. what how many people watch it? Nobody knows. Mm-hmm. That's true. It's like the mash finale. But it was an interesting game, and, uh, of course, the winner usually has all the answers, and the losers get blamed by what a terrible game they played yeah. and everything. But you, know, the one play that decided who was going to win this game, it was the punt. You know, the Michigan punt guy, catcher, yeah. dropped two. Yeah, I know. And he dropped that one, and it was rolling into the end zone, and all of a sudden it started coming back, it like backspin in golf. It did. And he was yeah. able to get on it on the one-yard line. Yeah. And they, you know, they – clobbered him right there and they were able to get into overtime but if that thing goes in the end zone he falls on it alabama's a two-point winner i know and so it's just the bounce of the ball so when everybody starts saying oh saban had a bad game he didn't have a bad game he had a game typical of the way he always coaches yeah. his offensive guys call the play maybe he could have had a better play there at the end and i think that guy going in motion uh, he should have thrown it out to him because they they had everybody up there, but that's you know that's well I I mean I I play. everybody wants to criticize the play I think the play was fine in mm-hmm. fact if mm-hmm. if the snap is snap. right here Milrow's got a, an angle he there he might have had a little yeah. better angle to look um, at it that's true but that's snap. I mean mm-hmm. I this I all mm-hmm. I could think about was that's why Steve didn't want to go to the shotgun. <laughs> it's because no. bad snaps yeah. drive you crazy on that on the shotgun. You no, know? there's a time for the shotgun and a time to be underneath. Yeah. Uh, now another interesting thing after uh, Michigan got it on the one yard line, they got in the gun and ran the ball to run the clock out. I know. If Alabama had an eight man front, yeah. squeezed it, oh, they could have hit him in the backfield. Yeah. They could have had the safety on yeah. that play. And then the next play, I think this quarterback got under center, which is what you should do when you're running out the clock or uh, trying to prevent a safety. So, I mean, there was one play here or there. It could have gone either way, and it just happened to uh, go in Michigan's favor. I always like what Lee Trevino used to say. They'd ask him about golf tournaments, this, that, and the other. And he said, uh, I try the best I can. Uh, when it's my turn to win, when the golf gods say it's your turn to win, I win. Yep. The other times I don't win. Yeah, that's right. But you try the best you can uh, every time out, and, and sometimes whatever the breaks happen uh, is the way it goes. I don't know if you were able to stay up for the mm-hmm. Washington game because I I did until the, at one point I said I got to go to bed. I'm I'm yeah. too old. I watched it to the third quarter. Yeah, that's what I did. So yeah, I'll, I'll catch the highlights. Tomorrow I thought they morning. were done. Yeah, mm-hmm. I thought they were going to mm-hmm. win the game, but and they sure. did win the game. But uh, certainly a great comeback by Texas, and um, 
It, it's mm-hmm. uh, I don't know. Let me first of all, let me ask you your take on the coaches that are in this national championship game: Harbaugh and Kalen DeBoer, who a lot of people don't even know about. Mm-hmm. They're they're learning about him. They're googling him to find out about him. But I knew he was at Fresno State and did a good job there. But he really him, came man. through a weird. Mm-hmm. He was in a high school. He was at Sioux Falls, and you know South uh, Dakota. Yeah, yeah. I think he went to college in South Dakota. He I'm did, yeah. Sure. And, at Sioux uh, Falls, yeah, he went. And he, he, he the Indiana coach that uh, just recently I think got fired, but uh, they ran into each other somewhere, and he he was at Indiana and recruited Penix out of uh, Florida, right, right? I think Riverview somewhere down near Tampa, and that's that was a connection there. So then he went to Fresno, I think one or two years, and then got the Washington job, and uh, Penix, you know, followed him from Indiana to Washington. Right. So that was the connection, Which is and huge. <laughs> they're having they're having a big year. <laughs> they're having the. Big do you year. know him at all, DeVore? I do not. Uh, but How about I, Harbaugh? Do you I ever run him, into him? Yeah, I've met him a couple times along the uh, paths and so forth. Yeah, he's a little different, but he's uh, he obviously must be a very good coach. He's having a, a good year, although his uh, postseason record, I think, before the other day was two and seven. Yeah. So Wasn't his good. postseason record has not been that super. But anyway, they, he's got a chance to win it all and uh, go from there. Yeah, you know, um, he's a different cat. There's mm-hmm. no doubt about it. Um, but, you know, the thing I took from that game, watching that game, is how hard his guys play for him. Mm-hmm. And that's all you really need to do as a coach. Get your guys to play as hard and as good as they can play. It doesn't matter if the media likes mm-hmm. you. It doesn't matter if you – if the uh, NCAA doesn't mm-hmm. like in some cases, but get your guys to play as hard as and the can. coaches. Yeah, I read somewhere one time, players. Yeah, we play for ourselves and our family, and we want to succeed for ourselves. But you got to want to play for your teammates yep. and your coaches. Yep. You got to all play for each other, and uh, you know that's that's a secret, Georgia. You got to give Kirby Smart and his guys credit. Absolutely, uh, they yeah. were all down there in the Orange Bowl except uh, the Brock. Brock, yeah, they were missing uh, but, a few guys. But he was yeah. hurt. They yeah. were hurt a little bit. Yeah. But most of all of them came to play. And that, to me, is what separates Alabama and Georgia. Almost every bowl game, their guys their guys all show up. Right. Uh, where these other schools, they, I guess they worry about injuries and they, they want to go pro or whatever. Well, I, I mean, everybody's, like, mm-hmm. trying to come up with the ways to fix the bowl games and everything. And I'm yep. like, you don't need to fix them. Okay, guys aren't going to play – they're, and they're not going to get this, mm-hmm. the, they're, but they're still going to get good ratings, and it's still content. Would you rather watch mm-hmm. cornhole, mm-hmm. Uh, you know, on on ESPN or or, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I, I was watching something the other day. I happened to bump into it. Or mm-hmm. they're on a ping pong table that's slanted, and they're playing mm-hmm. only with their feet. And this, this mm-hmm. is on ESPN. Yeah. <laughs> Would you rather watch that than mm-hmm. a bowl game between mm-hmm. who, Wyoming and whoever? I'd, I'd rather watch the, the bowl game. Yeah, the bowl games. Uh, some of them are really good. Yeah, uh, they gosh, are. Gosh, the uh, Clemson that was uh, a game great with game. Kentucky. Yeah. Oh, great game. I, I mean, D- Dabo and his Clemson guys, they wanted to win that just as bad as any game yeah, uh, they ever play. I mean, every game is important because there's a winner and a loser. And uh, – the SEC teams, I wrote down the winners uh, this year. These are all winners. Yep. Ole Miss, 11-2, first time ever. Missouri, 11-2. Uh, LSU won the bowl game and then fired all their defensive coaches. <laughs> but, heck, did. they went 10-3. and three. Nussmeyer threw for about, what, 350 yeah. yards or something, had, had a super game. Uh, he, he came – his interview after reminded me of Danny Warfel. He said, God is good. God is yep. good. Bo Nix said the same thing. Uh, Oregon, they had a big win. But also, Tennessee, they got a new quarterback kid that uh, they all love him, so they're sky high. And then, of course, Georgia, uh, Clobber and FSU, they're 13-1. and one. That certainly is a real good year. So, th- those schools have momentum going into the offseason. Uh, the teams that lost and the teams that didn't make it, uh, we are sort of, all right, yep. let's let's get back and try to be where they are this yep. time next year. Mm-hmm. It would have been interesting to see what would have happened if, if during your mm-hmm. 11 years here they had a 12-team playoff. You'd have been in the playoff every year, I think. Yeah, because we finished in the uh, – well, we finished 13th and 14th two years. We, we actually had two well, nine and four six. years. We might not have made it those years, but at least 10 out of 12. Yeah. We were that, in the top that would 10. Be, yeah. That would be – I mean, and, and that's the thing. Mm-hmm. That's what – 
they need to get back to. I did want to ask you about the new strength coach, Craig Fitzgerald, who worked with you for a while. And, and I wanted yeah. to, how did you go about? Um, oh, he was him? recommended uh, by one of uh, our coaches that had been with him somewhere. And we got him out of Harvard. And you know that football powerhouse, Harvard, That's don't right. you? But he was a strength coach up there, I think, for maybe all the men's sports. Uh, uh, they didn't have one for every uh, sport up at Harvard. <laughs> yeah, they didn't have a lacrosse. Uh, so he was with coach. me. Uh, <laughs> well, he was with us the year we uh, won the Eastern Division uh, because I got a picture with uh, me and Steve Jr. and Jamie Spronis and Fitz. So I'll have to get that to the local paper uh, <laughs> after after we beat Florida down here uh, for the Eastern Division, 2010. Yep. That was only, what, 14 years ago, 13 or so. So, yeah, he's a good one. And then he got a chance to go to the NFL, I think Houston Texans. He was there a while, and then he was at Tennessee for a while. He was, With yep. uh, Pruitt, and then back to the NFL. And that was the connection. Uh, our offensive line coach, who's also offensive coordinator, uh, was with uh, Fitz at New York Giants mm -hmm. uh, three years ago, I think. So there was a connection, I think, uh, Coach Napier had with him. Right, mm -hmm. right, exactly. Um I don't know how much. How much do you think? Mm -hmm. How important do you think this? I mean, you know what's going on here with mm -hmm. nutrition coaches and mm -hmm. everything, and you you've made the joke about it. You were the nutrition coach when you were here, yep. but you had a strength coach. So I mean, what? How important do you think it is? Yeah, those guys are important. Uh, push and uh, but what you got to do? You you got to find your leaders down there in the weight room, and they help push the other guys, and uh, so. It, as coach, you can't do it all as far as telling everybody what to do. You well, back then it, you were restricted a little bit, too, as, as to how much you could watch them, you know. And, and yeah, yeah, coaches uh, in the summer now, we were not uh, Now they kind of you can do anything you want. Yeah. yeah. Well, they got so many quality control uh, right. analyst guys and what have you. But uh, I don't know. I, I think uh, sometimes you, you have too many people. But the head strength coach can really – put the attitude in down there and the effort. Here's how we're going to do it, fellas. And uh, if, if not, you know, it got to be some consequences. Yep. So, uh, but Fitz is a, yeah, he's, you know, he's a fireball. He's energetic. And uh, he should help us. Really should. So how did you like him when you when you were working with him? I mean, I, I know. Oh, he's he... real good. Yeah, he's real good. He's excellent. And, uh, and then, you know, like any coaching profession, he, he got a better job. He got a higher job. In fact, Kerwin Bell. You know, Kerwin's at Western Carolina. Yeah, yeah. And I talked to him uh, the other day, and his son was his, like, quarterback coach. Cade, and, uh, Cade, yeah. Cade, and he called the plays, and he got to – he uh, was hired University of Pittsburgh. He was, yeah. As offensive was coordinator. Right, yeah. So, even though it's your son, opportunity, man, let's, let's, let's go jump on it. So, uh, anyway, that was uh, good to talk to Kerwin. Uh, they had, I think they went 7-4 and four up there last week, year, at Western. And uh, he's going to try to win that conference championship. They've never won one at Western I Carolina. Know, I know. So yeah. he's going to try to do it and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's kind of mm -hmm. built that. Uh, it, it was it, There was mm -hmm. a reason he got hired. It's kind of like Billy Napier. I said, mm -hmm. there's a reason we're here. And he, he has done a really good job there. I'd, mm -hmm. I'd love to see him come back here. And, but the, I'm not doing the mm -hmm. hiring. And I Throw never him. suggest who should be hired. Mm -hmm. You know, I just go from there. Um I know that you uh, also we have coming up uh, tonight mm -hmm. because you're a uh, big uh, basketball mm -hmm. per fan. Yeah. Florida, South Carolina. Are you going to go see Don? Yeah. And, and, and yeah, and, I'm and, scheduled uh, to see uh, the women's basketball team play the number one team in the nation. And uh, obviously, uh, wherever South Carolina women's team goes because they're number one in the nation, uh, extra crowd. Right, and, right. And the other team. You know, they're going to try the best they can to pull the big upset. So I know Kelly, Kelly Ray and her ladies are, are ready to play their best tonight. So, yeah, it, it should be an interesting game. I think we got a really good team. If we put it all together, who knows what could happen. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it would take some almost mm – -hmm. I don't want to say fluke, but well, it'd you, be an you, upset. But it'd be a, a huge upset, but oh, yeah. yeah. And then, so and then Saturday, you're going to Florida, Kentucky too? Uh, I may. I'm not sure that yet. But uh, I think that's a full house we got coming for that game. It is full house. So, yeah, anyway. I'm I'm going. I'll be there. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna work it, work the game. But mm -hmm. uh, I, I, you like going to basketball games. I know that you like. Uh, yeah, I like to see uh, 
Yeah, several each year and so forth. Yeah, I played basketball back in the day, but uh, I like all the sports. You what know, was your shoot. vertical? How, how high could you get up? I don't even think I ever tried. But <laughs> I, I, I know we played at Irwin, and their rim sort of leaned down a little bit. I mean, you could tell it, but that's the way it was. <laughs> So all of That's us, not unusual all of in us, high schools back in those days because I, I played on some of those too. All yeah. of us guys that could not dunk, and I, <laughs> I could not dunk, but we thought we could when we saw that limb, <laughs> rim going down a little bit. But uh, we were all trying that in pregame still, warm-ups, but we, we, couldn't, couldn't, quite get we couldn't get close now. Uh, where, Irwin, <laughs> Tennessee. Tennessee. Yeah. Where is that? What part it's only it? about 13 miles, uh, Unicoi County, just uh, down the road past Elizabethan. Uh, and they've had some good teams, Irwin. In fact, they're the Blue Devils, Irwin Blue Devils. Irwin Blue yep. Devils. So you were more yep. of a shooter when you played. Oh, yeah, definitely more shooting than uh, this, that, and the other. But let me say the most valuable player, in my opinion, on the Michigan team, yep. that running back, Blake Corum. Blake Corum, he's good. Uh, that touchdown run he had looked like a five-yard gain, and all of a sudden he wiggled through there and broke a tackle. And, uh, yeah, Alabama players don't tackle the way they used to. No. Have you noticed that? Uh, but they were playing – the thing is that, that drove me crazy about the game, because I was rooting for Alabama, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Um, was the way they were so good on defense, and then the, the last drive and then overtime, they were terrible. Yeah. And yeah. I, I just – I don't know if Michigan was saving up some calls or maybe they got tired. If they get – shouldn't be mm. getting tired the third, 14th game of the year, but – Mm -hmm. um, they just quit playing. They didn't play very good defense. At fourth and two, Blake mm -hmm. Corum goes mm -hmm. out of the backfield. There's nobody near him, and I'm like, that's true. Somebody mm -hmm. should put a play in. Florida should put a play in that's exactly that play because it worked so well. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. He there was nobody with him, and it, I think he would he get 20 yards and, until that block mm -hmm. in the back. But um, yeah, Blake Corum, he is a tough running back. He's hard to tackle, solid and. Uh, he could be the difference in the in the game with yep. uh, Washington here coming up Monday night. I think mm -hmm. I voted for him for the Doak Walker, and then I voted for the the Washington receiver. Uh, I always mispronounce the name Odunze. Mm -hmm. uh, I voted for him for the Blitnikoff. Um, so, and he didn't win it. But um, I, I did want to ask you about one other thing, which is the opt outs, mm -hmm. which we talk about. How do you how do you come down on Malik Neighbors from LSU? Who played the first half because he wanted to get to a thousand yards and break some kind of record? I don't even know what the record is. Mm -hmm. And then he took his pads off. Yeah. For the second half, and I'm like, I don't think I. Well, he probably that. said, "Coach, is it okay if I get to thousand and then sit out?" Uh, I, I would say he probably did that. And I mean, uh, Daniel sat out the Heisman Trophy winner. They gave yep. him a smart chance. Yep. And I'm not so sure. I'm just. Thinking, Josh Heupel may have told uh, his guy, uh, what's his name again? Oh, Milton. Milton, yeah. Milton, Milton. Mil Rowe and Milton. I get those confused a little <laughs> bit. But uh, Milton, I might. He said, you know, you might ought to sit out and uh, make sure you guy. don't get hurt yeah. for the NFL. Because yeah. when I saw the other guy playing, he might have should have been playing all year. That tall kid. Yeah. Ania, of course, he's playing uh, against a team that had no offense. So he well, that's true too. Yeah. But. Uh, I mean, he's he's a he's a talented player. You can tell that. But that's what mm -hmm. I, I a lot of people yeah. said. This uh, the Nico, bowl games. Nico, Nico, Nico. Yeah. I can't try the last no. name yet. Emma really. Leva was ish. Mm -hmm. I don't. Yeah, you got to work um, at it. Mm -hmm. But um, the the problem with the bowls that people are saying is that they become exhibition games, and I'm like, I'm still going to watch them. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I, I mean, you may get mad, and all these people are mad and about it and everything, but mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm okay. Um, Mm -hmm. Also, this weekend we have great uh, games to decide who's going to the playoffs. And mm -hmm. I know you you love watching the NFL as well. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, uh, it's uh, it is interesting. It, it? It, 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 and and what I look at though is all right. We have thirty two teams in the NFL. We're coming down to the last game, eighteen games in, where everybody there's a lot of teams that have. I know. possibilities mm -hmm. and I'm like that's what college football needs to get to I, yeah. I don't know that they've got to be exactly like the NFL but they need to be more like the NFL you know yeah that's uh, salary that caps maybe on NIL oh, oh yeah, yeah. That, that we should have some kind of limits on that but you would think with all those teams and they're playing uh, 
what, 17 games now, mm -hmm. that there'd be maybe a, a lot of teams about 12 and 5 or 11 and 6, you know, a whole bunch of teams like that. And then the other teams would be 5 and 11. But they're 8 and 9, 9 yep, and 8, yep. right? They're all right in there together. Well, not all of them, but most of them. So it, it, it keeps everybody's attention uh, through this last week, unless a few of them have already clinched. So Mahomes is not playing. I read that. And uh, the teams that can't improve their status, they'll, yeah, think, they'll hold some guys out. I think Lamar's not playing either. Yeah. He's, he's just yeah. going to win the MVP. That's all yeah. he cares about. Yeah, he's already um, done that. So, But, I mean, I mean him it's out. not the same opting out because you're coming back to play that's other right. games. Yeah, yeah. And you're that's, just resting to get ready for the next exactly. one. Exactly. Yeah, it's a little different. All right, Coach, you got anything else for us? Oh, I think that's about it. you got great it. notes there. Uh, yeah, I had all the notes here, and uh, I always like to look at preseason picks and see how we do yeah. at the end. And, of course, Georgia was picked first, Michigan second. Bama was picked fourth. Everybody said, man, they came yeah. a long way. Well, preseason, they were number four. Yeah. So, uh, Well, I think it goes back to that USF game. And after that game, yeah. everybody's like, Alabama's done. Yeah, it, it does go back to that. But still, uh, in uh, Washington and Texas were 10 and 11. So they, they improved a little bit more than most of them. But it's still usually the you know the top 10. Right. Uh, although Missouri came out of nowhere <clears throat> and Arizona. Uh, Jed Fish uh, had a good year out there. He did a great job guys. out there, yeah. yeah I, th I think they finished 10 and 3. I think he, so. he and Shane are good buddies. He, Shane knows Shane Matthews? Well. Yeah. Well, he was here. He went to Florida. Yeah, he went to Florida. Yeah, yeah. and um, mm -hmm. along with Gene Chizik, who got fired this week. Yeah, so. they had to make a change up there. And they they uh, were bad mm -hmm. on defense, yeah, and I don't know bad. that it was him. I it, yeah. it may have been personnel, mm -hmm. just like here. I don't know if Austin Armstrong is a bad defensive coordinator if the personnel is just not mm -hmm. there, and hopefully they get a lot better. We mm -hmm. saw a lot of good things happen in that Under Armour game yesterday. Where uh, I I love this kid Aaron Childs. I think he's a, he's going to be a great player for Florida. But mm -hmm. hey, we'll see what happens. Yep, time will tell with everything. But uh, you still got to have teamwork and guys loving each other, playing for effort, yeah. playing smart. Uh, all those kind of things are helpful. And those good kickers, I tell you that I thought that kicker for Alabama was well, Riker. He was winning the game for him. Yeah. What did he make three fifty yarders or so? Or? He'd have made another one yeah. too if they needed him. He was yeah. he was really good. Yeah. yeah, he's really good, and that that's the thing though. You mm -hmm. talked about guys loving each other, and I think mm -hmm. that's it's so hard with the portal now to get guys yeah. on mm -hmm. the same page. But some teams are able to do that. Michigan's been able to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I think Alabama was able to do that. Yeah. I mean, that wasn't a great team, but they they played for each other. I think mm -hmm. I think Georgia and it, certainly in the bowl game they showed that as well. Yeah. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Yeah. All right, Coach. All right. We appreciate mm -hmm. your time as always. And uh, he'll be back with us on Monday for another appearance uh, sponsored by Melvin Law. We appreciate him, him, and we appreciate them. We'll be back with Robbie Andrew doing Yes, Nowhere, Maybe, and all of our other mm -hmm. great stuff here on another Duly Noted podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Melvin Law Gator Studios at Steve Spurrier's Gridiron Grill. Hello there, everybody. I'm Pat Dula, of course, from another Duly Noted podcast. And this is a great Adam Brewer, and he's just opened up a place here, Adam Brewer to go. Uh, what would give you the idea to do this, to have a to-go place? Uh, we really like the fast concept, you know, being able to get the barbecue. Uh, now we have this new online ordering. So we before it was a call ahead, carry out, quick service. Uh, we have like a curbside kind of a deal where, um, you know, you're, you're, everything's ready to go for you. Um, and then we thought, wow, we have a really great dine-in concept, but uh, how can we make this you know, streamlined for the customer and make it easy and accessible uh, for all parts of town? Adam's Rib Co. to go. Come on down and enjoy it. I was driving behind a lady, and very suddenly she moved out of the way. There was a log laying in the road, and when I hit my brakes, I went on top of the log. I had two herniated discs. I just haven't been the same since. Jeffrey Melton fought for me all the way. Him and his team really went there for me. Throughout the whole lawsuit, he made sure that my bills was paid. It was never no whenever I called him and asked him for something. Call Melvin Law right now. Another duly noted podcast comes to you from the Coach's Podcast Room at Spurrier's Good Iron Grill. A celebration point. You can watch and listen to us on Facebook and YouTube for every podcast that we do on Mondays and Fridays at 2 o'clock. Listen to the podcast whenever on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Overcast, 
any of the other 39 platforms where you can find this podcast or your favorite podcast. Remember to like, follow, and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below or call me if you want to do some advertising at 352-317-3444. Okay, and welcome back to another Duly Noted podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Meldon Law Gator Studios. Great to be back at Coach Spurrier's restaurant, and great to have him. But uh, right now we have the great one, and that's Robbie Andrew coming to us from the Love Boats. Um, you know, that looks like the Love Boat. I mean, I've, been, I've been trying to think what it looks like. We went with Full House early, but it looks a lot more – like it's a love boat uh, scenario. So are you going to like hook up with uh, Morgan Fairchild or something <laughs> on this episode? Yes. <laughs> she may be a little too old for me, Pat. <laughs> Nobody's too old for you. No, you're right. You're right. Mother Teresa's corpse isn't too old for you to yeah. date. Yeah, right? I'm looking forward to this love cruise, Pat. It should be a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm, not, well, I'm say- not going anywhere, of course. Say hi to Gopher and uh, Captain Stubing and all all the all the great friends that we have there. And what, what was the bartender's name, Pat? Uh, that that one I can't tell you. Well, I'll, I'll buddy up to him. How's that? Okay. Well, yeah. Well, eventually you of will course. know his name if you're on the Love Boat. Cruise. Gopher. All right. Robbie, of course, coming to us on the Big Mills Cheese Steak. Uh, Zoom line, and we're going to play Yes, No Way, or Maybe. No, Yes, No Way, or Maybe with him on the Big Mills cheesesteak Zoom line as well. And we'll get to that right away. I mean, Robbie did a yeoman's work on Sunday helping us get through that uh, podcast because obviously, anyway, you guys all know the story. So we'll get to it right now. Let's go. Robbie, are you ready? Are you prepared? Ready. Are you mentally maybe. erect? Maybe. <laughs> yes, right. I am. All right. Number one on Yes, No Way, or maybe brought to you by Big Mills Cheesesteak, where you go in there and say, I listen to Duly Noted Podcast, and you get free fries with your order. Florida has a better chance of beating Kentucky than the women do of beating South Carolina. Uh, yes, Pat. I, I, absolutely. I think uh, – Golden's got his team playing really well right now. They've developed some chemistry. They're playing well offensively. And, you know, South Carolina, how many have they won in a row against the Florida women? And that they don't they a don't billion. lose often. So I think it's a billion. Yeah. They won a billion games in a row. Yeah, I, I would I would hope that the women are competitive, but I think the men do have a chance to to pull the upset here. And they would be a huge win for Golden in his program. He's really got things going in the right direction right right now, it looks like. So but it gets only tougher from here, Pat. Yeah, and I talked about this earlier. Uh, don't take too much from a loss in this game, because yeah, no. this, I think I personally think this is the best team in the SEC, even though the net rankings not that high compared to Tennessee and some teams. But uh, they're they're that's the team you got to beat. If you can beat them, it'll be a great great uh, day for the Gators, and we'll all be home. Yeah, before, be. Uh, we'll all be home before dark. It's great. Yeah, you know, it would be a signature win for him. But you know how those signature wins go, Pat. They don't last that long. So Yeah, I remember Mike White beating Auburn. That didn't last very long. No. And what about Mike Shula beating Urban Meyer in 2005? That was a signature win. That didn't go well later either. He beat him so, so bad that Urban in the press conference, I thought I was going to have to help him off the stage. He was so yeah. devastated by it. And I was yeah, like, he was demoralized. None of us are surprised that you lost. We're we're a little surprised the way you lost, but they're better, and they had the, they were at home, and you didn't. I don't think you got the SEC yet. That I think that is the day. I will believe this till the end of my life. That is the day Urban Meyer understood the SEC from that point on. That Alabama yeah, I agree, Pat. I, I agree with you. I think it woke him up as to what he had to do to to be successful here. All right, number two on yes, no way, or maybe for Robbie Andrew, Jim Harbaugh is an NFL coach next year. I'm going to say a strong maybe, Pat. I mean, all indications are that, you know, the NFL wants to get him. It sounds like he would be interested in making the move. And if they win the national title, I think he's going to look at other ways to go. And I think he, he really wants to get back in the NFL. You know, his brothers had great success there. And I think he'd like to kind of join him there again and give it another shot at the NFL because – 
you know, if he wins this one, I think he thinks, what else can I play for here? Let's move on for, to another challenge. I think he's leaning that way, but that's just my thought. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the bottom line is, no matter whether he wants to go to the NFL or not, Jimmy Sexton is going to float, float it around. So we know that. Yeah. Um, but he may be one of the guys that goes, nah, hey, NCAA came after me, suspended me for six games. Guess what? We won the national championship. Come yeah. on, bring it on again. However, he could look at it and go, hey, we're going to get hammered by the NCAA next year. And we lose 40, I think it's 44 players from the roster. Uh, yeah, they do. Without, without transfers and everything. And he may go, this is a good time to leave. I don't know. He's yeah. so weird. I, I have no idea what he's going to do. He is he is weird. That The guy that does the imitations of Saban and the other coaches <laughs> last week had a great thing with where he's talking to Harbaugh and Saban goes, have you ever had a normal conversation with anybody? <laughs> and I'm thinking, I don't think he has. Zach? Pulled that up yeah, uh, on Sunday. We ran a little bit of it, yeah, but we didn't run yeah. the whole thing. I, I still recommend you watch the whole thing. It's, it's yeah, hilarious. that was funny. All right, Robbie, finally, number three on Yes, Nowhere, maybe the NIL has gone bonkers. We know that, but the NCAA has got to get a grip on the portal. That should be their main focus. Yes, they do, Pat, and I think they have to, but but will they? They're, they're just a lame duck thing right now, a lame duck entity. They don't do anything. So, you know, I think somebody has to take control and change this because it's just just chaos now out there. But it's uh, football free agency and college football. And, you know, you're going to have to put some sort of limits on it or, or, or something. Right now, it's just crazy. You know, I'm one of the guys, yeah. and I think you were too, Robbie, and, and I know a lot of other people that were saying, I, I can't believe that coaches can leave. you got to let players do this. you got to let players uh, yeah. transfer without being having to sit out a year. But nobody ever said – Hey, you, what you've got to do is let players transfer forever to as many schools as they want to go to. Nobody ever said that. So no. uh, it does bother me. And, and it's, I think they're so afraid of getting sued that they are just aren't going to make a move on this. But they need to say, you can transfer once. The next time you transfer, you got to sit out. And we're not going you know, you know, to open it up for appeal. You're out for a year. That's the way it works. Yeah. It, but I don't think the NCAA will do anything for, like you said, getting for getting sued again, which they'd lose that probably. But I think the, the coaches have to come together and, and come up with some sort of plan or something and present it to somebody because right now it's just nobody likes it right now except the players maybe. And the schools are, you know, reaping the benefits of the portal like FSU yeah. has done. And that's the problem is that the, the schools that are doing the best are going to continue to do the best. And that, 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 concerns me about college football is are we going to see the same eight teams all the time but I don't know that we weren't seeing that al already but you always yeah. had hope but now I don't know that anybody's going to have hope so I don't know I don't know I, you I gotta be, write, be the commissioner I, I should be the commissioner Yeah. although they'd have to kind of wheel me in you know and <laughs> have chicken wings put you behind the curtain <laughs> in my day we didn't have a playoff <laughs> <laughs> all right robbie always great talking to you and we appreciate you uh, as always coming on the big mill okay, maybe i'll see you this weekend yes no way or maybe all right well thanks to robbie for coming on and robbie's been doing double duty he did the uh, the uh monday or sunday show and they did this show and he's gonna do next monday on Yes, Nowhere, maybe we always love having him on, getting his views because, well, he's my best friend. He really is, and we love talking. And I think he has a, a healthy view on college sports and all sports. And he watches more than almost not as much as me, but he watches similar amount of sports as I do. All right, let's get to our other fun stuff that we always love to do in the last segment, and we look forward to it. Uh, We'll start out with the Adams Ripco to go Gator of the Week. Uh, slim Pickens this week, but I, I knew who I wanted to pick. It wasn't even close. And that was, you know, may have never heard of him. His name is Aaron Childs. He plays linebacker. And he played in that Under Armour game, I think it was, the other day. But I had already kind of fallen in love with this guy, reading tweets, reading, watching tape of him. doing. I think he's going to be a difference maker. Now, again, 
he, he and Miles Graham are both coming in to play linebacker, and they're both really good, and I think they're going to be great. So they're also freshmen, and they were playing against high school guys yesterday. Aaron Childs, I think, had five tackles and a five five tackles and a and a fumble recovery for a touchdown. He dropped the ball before he scored, and I'll I'll cure him of that. Believe me, because I'm still trying to cure Quezzy of that. But um, but I that he's my Gator of the week. He had the best game of anybody. I mean, Lagway got hurt early, hurt his foot. He only played one series. Um, but he was the best of the Gators that played in that game. And I, I like this guy. I, I may be way off on this and who knows? I mean, I, when Kamari Wilson signed with Florida, I thought it was a big deal. Turned out it was a non-factor. Um, he was all about NIL. And when somebody else in NIL got more money than him, he goes, I'm not playing. Well, he didn't play anymore. And that, that was fine. Um, it's a nightmare, this NIL, but it is what it is. But Aaron Childs is coming to Florida, and I hope he is one of the, I hope he is a difference maker. I feel like he's going to be. And I don't I'm, – I'm saying Miles Graham, I, I agree totally he's going to be a difference maker. So you put those two guys in there. However, when you're a freshman, it's hard to play any position. Any position, I think, except wide receiver. I think wide receiver is the one position when you're a freshman – all you got to do is know what the play is and catch the ball and run with it. Um, other positions are really hard, especially uh, physically. Anyway, he is our Adams Rubco to go Gator of the Week. We just had Adams Rubco to go. My wife called me uh, Tuesday uh, and said, Hey, can you get Adams? Yeah, I said, Yeah, I, okay, absolutely. Are you kidding me? I walked in there. They knew my name. They had a new ghost pepper. Uh, Barbecue sauce, and man, it burned my butt up. But it was good. I loved it. I loved it. All right, let us move on to our Leonardo's at Mill Hopper quick picks. And we've got a lot of people who have qualified. Not many on the last game because most of you picked Alabama and you you didn't get it right. We're going to give you a simple one today and uh, probably do a pull in, um, in a week or so, right around there, for a new winner. Uh, I, w- I would love to see, and we're getting more different people in the contest, and I'm not nothing against the people that have been in the contest all the time and keep going, coming back, and you guys have won a bunch of stuff, and you're going to continue to win because it's just a blind draw. But it's good to see some new names in there, and I, I hope more and more people will get in because it's really easy. It's qualifying, then if you get picked, you win $25 at Leonardo's. That is a great thing, I can tell you that. And you could either win a copy of my book, Game of My Life, or a Bob Dooley hat, uh, which is very nice. I was wearing one just today. All right, so our our pick this week is a very simple one. Big game, Buffalo at Miami. I'm not even going to look at the spread. I don't even care. Buffalo at Miami. It's probably two or three points one way or the other. I don't care. Buffalo at Miami. Huge game. If you're watching Hard Knocks in season, um, which has been really good. I've really enjoyed it. You're you're probably all Miami fans. All my family, in fact, including my brother-in-law, uh, Frank Fetto, and then all my family on the uh, Dooley side up that live up in that area, they're all big Buffalo fans. I have nothing against Buffalo. I want Miami to win. I think with all the injuries, they probably won't. If I was picking, I'd pick Buffalo, even though they're on the road. But that's it's up to you to make the pick. You make the pick. Send it in uh, to the uh, email address and uh, patrickdooley54 at gmail.com. Very easy to do. And you can qualify for the contest. All right. That is brought to you by Leonardo's at Millhopper, one of the great places in America. Not just Gainesville, in America. Let us move to our this, that, and the other. Brought to you by the great folks out at Ironwood Golf Course by Ballyhoo Grill. I was in there the other day too, and um, had a great time with, uh, with saw Bill Riker. We had a great conversation, and of course, also by our good friends at Dar Shackow Insurance for all your insurance needs. We appreciate them very much. All right, the this on this, that, and the other is when Anzalone came here. Alex Anzalone from uh, I don't even know where he came from. Came from somewhere up north, and 
you know, long haired guy. And I'm like, hey, I hope he's good, but I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if this guy is going to be anything special. Um, the that is that I watched him play, and he was good, and he hit people hard, but he kept getting hurt. In fact, I'll never forget the game against Arkansas out there. A bunch of guys got hurt in the game. Del Rio got hurt in that game, uh, but Anzalone, I think, broke his arm or did something, and that basically set that team back because he was that good but he had a, a several injuries um the other is that I do enjoy watching him play even though I'm not a Detroit fan I love watching him play for the Lions and he is he has just blossomed into this elite player I think he's tremendous did not make the Pro Bowl but he's an alternate so that is cool that he's an alternate and look guys drop out teams make Super Bowls that can't go um I know that the, the Pro Bowl itself is if you've already been on it, you're probably going to get on it again unless you have a bad season. It, it's kind of a – anyway, I don't care that much because I would not watch the Pro Bowl if you put toothpicks in my eyes. But uh, it's good that he's an alternate, and I appreciate him, and he is a stud NFL player. And uh, Alex Anzalone is our subject of this, that, and the other. All right, that is brought to you again by Ironwood, by uh, Dar Shackow, and, of course, by Ballyhoo. Let us move on to our Hesser and Kipke three things with Hesser and Kipke. And of course, you know Hesser and Kipke is a Gainesville law firm specializing in the areas of work, family law and workers' compensation. If you're a loyal listener to the, of this show, you know who we are by now. If not, Google the firm, check out the reviews, and hear what the cl our clients have to say. Ken and Jennifer can be reached 24-7 via call or text at 352-339-9920. Hesser and Kipke, we appreciate them so much. Let's get to number one on Hesser and Kipke, and that is Seth McLaughlin. You know who Seth McLaughlin is, Zach? It is the center for Alabama, yes. Had a bunch of bad snaps in that game, including the pivotal one there at the end of the game. Not good. I understand that. So what happened? They killed him. The fans jumped on him, and he's in the portal. And I would, I said, take him, please. Have him come to Florida. Move him to guard if you have to, but bring him here. We, it, if we had a couple of bad snaps a game and you had an Alabama starting guy who started two years in a row uh, on your offensive line, that would be tremendous. I hope that Florida gets him. I don't know if they will or not. Um, but this happens. Guys just get fed up with people posting stuff about him. It's why Florida had to go without Evan McPherson his last year. Evan McPherson missed that kick against LSU. He started looking at his – texts and emails and stuff and he was like I'm out of here man I can't I cannot put up with this kind of crap it's not it's happened to people before and so just remember that when you're texting and emailing and posting stuff on Twitter you may drive a guy out now Alabama fans may go good good get rid of him you're wrong if the guy is good enough to start for you for two years okay he had a couple of mistakes and he and you know you're you're over look I get it Mike Pouncey was like the worst snapper I ever saw in my life. He had problems with sweating on his on the ball too much. Um, he played in the NFL for a long time. He's a great player. Um, so you brought it on yourself, Bama fans, but you're not the first people to br bring it on yourself. Uh, number two, um, headline. The headline I would have liked to have seen, but it wasn't. Uh, nobody used this headline. Um, Former Gator player fired as coach. You would go, well, who is that? Gene Chizik got fired by North Carolina, and he probably should have. Their defense was pathetic when he was there. I, uh, Chris Doring told this story about he loves Gene Chizik. I've not really spent any real time with Gene Chizik. It sounds like he's a great dude, um, but he certainly – his defense sucked. They were terrible. And he knew he kind of knew he was gonna it wasn't gonna last. He came out of retirement, spent time with his kids, and then came out of retirement to to do this with, for Mac Brown. But he got let go. 
Um, so he's a former Gator, though. Didn't really play here, but he was on the team. He was a walk on. I don't know how many of you knew that. Um, all right. So number three on uh, the Heth, uh, sorry, Hesser and Kipke, three things. And I can't play this for you, but if you want to go back and look at it, um, it's going a little viral. I don't know what a little viral means. I mean, it's not going viral, viral, but it's a lot of people are looking at it. And it's Mike Dorvell's post-game speech after their loss to Georgia. And it's really good. And it makes you kind of like him. Now, I know he's an FSU coach. I get it. I was never rooting for him in any game he has, has ever coached, okay? But I listened to this and I went, that is a good speech. That's the way you talk to a team that just got beat 63-3. to three. Mostly, most of the time, you're never going to feel that. Not at 13-0. and 0. Uh, But it's really good. So I'm, I'm recommending to everybody to Google it and find it. It's not going to be hard and watch it. It's, it's really good. I, I would, we would play the whole thing, but it goes on for about three or four minutes. So we may, I don't know. You know, never know with Zach. Zach may play an excerpt from it. So, um, all right. So that is our Hesser and Kipke three things. Uh, let's get to our swamp restaurant games of the weekend. Boy, we got some games this weekend. We'll start with the Florida game, Florida basketball. For those of you watching at home, ESPN 1230 is where that game is going to be on. It'll be a lot of fun. There's a lot of basketball this weekend. Conference plays starting. It's going to be a fun weekend if you like basketball. But if you like the NFL, it's even a better weekend. All these games that matter, it's going to be uh, exciting to see how that goes. Um, but I'll give you the, what, one, two, three, four games, five games that I think you need to pay attention to. Houston, Indianapolis is a Saturday game. 8.15 on ABC and ESPN. They're showing on all their networks, which I still don't get. I don't get why they've got to have a game on ESPN2, ESPN, and ABC at the same time. It seems silly to me. It just – and then you'll go to ESPNU, and it'll be on there too or something. But anyway, it's on all their channels. At 8.15, again, on a, on all the ABC and ESPN channels. That's a big game in the playoffs picture. Another big game, Jacksonville needs a win against Tennessee. Uh, that game is Sunday at 1 o'clock on CBS. Uh, the um, Tampa Bay game at Carolina. Now, they should win that game easily. I don't care if I'm starting a quarterback. Carolina's terrible. Their owner's throwing stuff at fans um, and got fined $300,000, and he went, uh, I think I have that on me. The guy's worth like $20 billion. He's like, you know, like, ooh, $300,000 fine. Ooh, I'm really worried. Um, anyway, that game is at 1 o'clock on Fox, if you're looking for it. Uh, 425 on Fox. Big game as well. Kansas City at the uh, Chargers. I'll watch that game. i see what Kansas City can do. Buffalo-Miami, as we talked about earlier, is a game you're picking on the Leonardo's pick. But Buffalo-Miami is at uh, 820 on uh, NBC on Sunday night. I'm looking forward to that game. I really am. Uh, I don't have a lot of hope for Miami, to be honest with you, just because of all the injuries they have on defense. You know, Bradley Chubb going out now, and they just had a lot of problems there. So those are the Swamp Restaurant Games of the Weekend. If you go to the Swamp, tell them you – you're there because of another duly noted podcast, and that's why you went there. Go see Ryan and say, hey, Ryan, Pat Dooley said he'd buy me a beer. And he'll say, I don't think he did. And he'll be right, but still go. Go there. Have a good time. they got all these sangria specials. they got all these drink specials. And you can watch games from multiple TVs. You'll have a good time. I promise you that at the Swamp Restaurant. All right, it is time for Pat Dooley Story Time which is all, as always, is brought to you by East Lake Pediatrics, our good friend Mike Jordan down there, and we appreciate him very much. And uh, uh, because the national – and I'm one of those guys – I don't know if you, you, Zach, had to do this, but maybe you don't know. It's like, where is a, where is a national championship game? I, I, I'm watching these games, and I had to look it up. It's at Houston. Mm-hmm. Houston, as they said in Superman 2. Um, so I'm like, okay, I guess that's okay. You know, it's fine. I guess that would have been a big deal for Texas if they'd gotten there. 
But um, certainly Michigan is going to flood the market. I saw where the ticket prices went from. When Michigan won, they were about 2200 per ticket. When um, – when uh, Texas lost the final game, they went down to like 900. They just dropped. So if you if you're a ticket broker and you got them, you got them sold at 22, you made a lot of money. Um, anyway, so I thought about Houston and I go, man, I haven't been there a whole lot, but I, I remember the one time I spent in Houston, and it was one of the best weekends of my life. I was working for the Florida Times Union, and my job that weekend was to first go on Sunday to the Dallas, I think it was Dallas-Miami game, okay? A great game. Um, the night before, I watched Florida and Miami play, but I could only watch it on, on TV, on, on tape delay, and I finally looked at something and found out they had Florida had won the game. It was a big deal that Florida won the game. Anyway. So the next day I go to that game, and then I go to Houston and cover the Houston. No, it was Dallas-Atlanta, and then the next game was Houston-Miami. And in my memory, that was Monday night. In my memory, that was the game where Earl Campbell like was running over people and his jersey came off. That's my memory. But I, but the, the fact that I got to go to those games, and I, look, the next time I went to Houston, the only other time I've been to Houston was for the Johnny Manziel game in, in uh, College Station and had a had a good time there. We had this thing going where we were doing this. We decided that we were going to order like this. We were going to cover our mouths so nobody could see our things. So we were, we were doing this all the time. And we kept doing it all night. It was me, Robbie, I think Tim Andrew was there, and it was Angie and Dave Sapp, two of our great friends. They had shown up there, and we'd run into each other, and we were all night. We were like, I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> You know, stuff like that. We had we thought it was hilarious. But anyway, those are my two trips to Houston. And I had a great time there. I, I love it. I look, do I love Houston? I don't know. I've known we've been there twice for a couple of nights, so I don't know. But that is my Pat Dooley story time. I'm only gonna deliver the rest of the show like this. I do need one of those cards, you know. All right. Thirty eight seven X on three. Ready, break. Anyway, that's our show. Thanks to Zach for doing a great job, as always. He does, always does a great job. Thanks to Coach Spurrier for being here. Thanks to Robbie Andrew for coming on. We'll be back Monday. Coach Spurrier will join us again. And Robbie will join us again. And then on uh, Thursday, I think we'll have uh, Chris Lowe come on and kind of wrap up the season. As I said earlier, next Thursday, the following Thursday, Andrea Adelson will join us. we got good guests coming. Then we'll get some former players to come on as well. Got a lot going on here. Stay with us. We love doing the show, and we love our listeners and our people who watch us. You guys are the best, and you have made this a great show. And our sponsors, we know that. All right, that's going to do it for me. It's going to do it for Zach. We will be out of here until Thursday. No, this is Thursday. Until Monday. I keep I get confused during the holidays a lot. Until Monday. I am Pat Dooley. I am deep. I am way back, and I am out of here. Okay.